The Red Maple, we're here with Alicia Shiro, who is the CEO and president of Aced It Events. Is that correct, Alicia? That is correct. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Um, before we begin, why don't you uh, take our audience through who you are, where you come from, a little bit about your company, and then we can dissect, uh, we can dissect things from there. Sure. Thank you, Chris, for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, so I got started a long time ago. Um, I've been doing events for 15 years now. And uh, interestingly enough, I started doing trade shows um, for a technology company. And I was very fortunate in that I was able to travel around the world. I got to go to China, to Macau, to Hong Kong, and pull off some really interesting events there. Um, and then after a few years, I think I was there probably about five years, um, I wanted more than just a trade show. So I wanted to kind of produce my own um, events. I ended up going to an advertising company, which was really interesting uh, initially because when I first got there, I was a, a project manager and I kind of fell into the event role. Um, actually, I didn't fall into it. I created it. Um, so what ended up happening was at this advertising company, we had a bar in the office, a fully licensed bar, right? Advertising. Why not? Um, who thought that was a good idea? So it was also an event space, like 5,000 square feet, very large space. And the girl that was running it at the time, she uh, was traveling a lot, so she needed help. So one night she was like, hey, do you mind? Um, I heard that you managed bars and restaurants. I was like, yeah, like 100 years ago, but okay. She's like, we need someone to watch you know, the bar tonight. And I was like, what does that even mean? So basically it was just kind of closing out the register, making sure that everything is you know, kind of following procedure, whatever that is. Um, so I said, sure, why not? So I did that and I was kind of seeing uh, clients and employees mixing and drinking, probably not the best combination. So there was no schedule of what was happening in the space. So I started to talk to her about that. And I was like, was there a schedule? And I was like, do you want a schedule? Um, because she had asked me to do it a couple more times. And I was like, well, if I'm gonna do this, then I need it to be somewhat organized so I know what I'm walking into. She's like, look, whatever you want to do, be my guest. So I was like, okay. So I started a schedule, started, um, uh, long story short, I started renting the space to our clients. And we had global brands, Rolex, Macy's, Diageo, um, great brands. So anytime they needed an event, a space, um, they would reach out and I would plan the event for them because it wrapped into what we were currently doing for them as their advertising agency. So that became its own P&L. Um, so it became a revenue generating uh, business. So what we did with that money was we reinvested it back into the employees so that we could host events for the employees. Um, and I did that for six years and it was the best, one of the best jobs I ever had. I got to do so many celebrity events um, and just really being challenged. We built out spaces. We built a forest in the office made out of bamboo trees. <laughs> we so did a we lot of really- whole new product, is that fair? Exactly. And then I got a call from an event startup company and they were um, starting an online marketplace for events, which I thought was really interesting. Um, but I had such a kind of sweet gig at the time. I was like, well, it would really have to be worth my while for me to leave. And they're like, it's a startup. We want you and three other people to launch the New York office. And, you know, I just kind of loved what they were trying to do. Um, so I left and went and worked there for two years. Um, and I became a partner there within six months. Um, they put me in sales, which was something I'd never done. And I got to tell you, I have such respect for sales because I don't think I could ever do that again. <laughs> it was uh, extremely challenging. Um, and I already had a client base. So I tapped into that client base right away. And my CEO was like, 
we're going to these meetings and we're walking out with events. He's like, literally no one's doing that. He's like, so you're not producing events anymore. You're strictly doing sales. And I was like, okay. Um, but it was great to be challenged in that way. It was something that I probably never would have challenged myself in that way. And I think when you do that and you succeed, it's necessary to remember that when you're thrown into what just happened. So that belief in yourself has to come from an experience that you were actually able to excel in. And for me, it was that. Very cool. And, and, and that's and that what parlayed you into running your own business? Exactly. So I was there for two years. Um, unfortunately, the company made some decisions that I didn't necessarily agree with. And being a partner, um, you know, I spoke to the CEO a lot and it was just, you know, just not the direction I wanted to go in. So I left and decided, you know what, it's time for me to just do my own thing. And Aced Events was born. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 so when when did you start that? When did you start Ace to Ace to Events? Twenty fifteen, uh, November of twenty fifteen, um, we started. I mean, I honestly didn't skip a beat. I like left in October, and I was like, "All right, chop chop. What do we, you know, do this? Incorporate website, and just kind of went through the steps." And and how did that how did that turn out for you when you left? I mean. You know, did, did you, did you, you said you didn't lose a, a beat, but did you bring clients with you? Did you have a revenue? Yeah. Did you have a book? Yeah. So um, I did do a really smart thing when I joined that company. Um, I had them sign off on my clients that I was bringing in so I could take nice. them if I left. So that was probably the smartest thing I did. Um, and so, you know, I reached out to everybody right away and, I, and they were already still contacting me. They're like, wait, what's happening? What, what? And yeah. they're like, well, okay, we're still going to give you the, can you still do the event? And I was like, sure. So for me, it was fortunate in that sense that I already had that base. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I was up and running pretty quickly. So you had a non-compete, non-solicit agreement of some sort. Gotcha. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. and, and and so how many clients did you bring? I mean, it only only feel if you're comfortable sharing. Did you bring a lot of clients with you when you I left? Or we had um, I would say at least twenty. I would say sure. at least twenty sure. different clients mm -hmm, from twenty you know, so different. That's a whole that's a whole topic unto unto itself. Um, I'm always interested in entrepreneurs because what what you just said to me clearly tells me, yeah, you know, it's beaming entrepreneur, right? The fact that you had the wherewithal to say. Look, I'm bringing in clients. Just that gut telling you, I'm bringing in clients. They're my clients. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Like you're, you really do have to listen to your intuition. And it's not that you know. And I hate to say this and make it a gender thing, but I feel like women are afraid to ask for that sort of stuff. And I don't know why. I right. um, but I just feel like we're not taught that. Um, and for me, it was more about, and it, it's all how you're approaching it as well. Like for me, it's all about. I've worked with these clients for six years. They're also my friends. So if I'm, if they're trusting me to bring them into a new company and I am no longer actually planning their event, I had to pass them on to someone else because I'm now doing sales. So I have to make sure that they're going to be taken care of and that they're happy. So that was really my priority was more about making it about that, that you know, these are not just my clients, they're my friends. So where I go, they go. And I need to know that they're being taken care of the way that I would take care of them. So, so for me, it was at the time, it seemed like, oh yeah, I really thought this out, but I honestly didn't. It was more about like, I can't just, you know, take them and they're not going to, you know, they're not going to be taken care of the way that I would, or like, what if I leave, then what happens to them? So I think that's what made me think about it more than anything. I see. I see. So, so you leave, you take 20, you take some of 20 clients or so with you. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm just, I'm always curious. This has nothing to do with COVID and the cop topic of today, but I'm always just curious. What was the reaction from your, uh, that I left, that you left and that you're, well, it was kind of mutual. And here's another thing I say, um, you know, don't ever worry about getting fired from, from a company because sometimes you have to be forced out of something to get into something new. Most people won't leave where they are because they're comfortable, they're content, maybe they're afraid, maybe they're scared. 
whatever the case may be. So sometimes you're forced out of something in order to put you into something new. And where I was at that time in the company, I made it very clear to them that they there was a hire they brought on that I this person was toxic to the company. So, you know, there was a little discord there and I was just kind of like, it's not going to work anymore. So either you fire me or we're just going to go our separate ways, like at that point. Um, So, yeah. And I think, you know, there was really no hard feelings, like nothing ended on a bad note. I had the great respect for the CEO and the other two founders. And I think they felt the same about me. I did a great job the whole time I was there, but at some point you don't want to be told what to do by someone who doesn't know what they're doing is when you get to a level where you know your business. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone probably eventually gets there at some point. There's always someone that you're probably going to butt heads with. (laughs) at some time or another. And you just have to make that choice. Do you want to stay and figure it out? Is it worth it? Or is it a situation where, like I just said, you're being told what to do by someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Um, And in that scenario, for me, it just didn't make sense anymore. I'm like, it just does not make sense. So I think it was a mutual separation. I had a similar, I had, I was in a similar situation um, a few years ago. Uh, Michelle and I actually both together for, for the most part. Uh, we left the firm, you know, for not, nothing but respect for the firm. Uh, incredible firm. But it, for me, it's just uh, time to time to move on for a whole host of reasons, which, you know, sort of uh, no reason to get into them. But for me, right, and I would love to hear your thoughts about it. I was a little nervous. How, how about you? Were you a little nervous about leaving yeah. and going on your own? Yeah, I think fear is a very real reaction when change is coming, right? Um, No one likes change, but um, change can be very exciting as well. Uh, I think, you know, I think it goes back to what I said before. You have to dig deep, right? And you have to know that you've had these little successes along your journey in life. And when you're going to try to do something new, that's what you tap into. It's like, well... If I did it once, I can do it again. Um, And ironically, after what's just happened, basically like starting my business and then having to start pretty much an entirely different business, you know, again, you tap into stuff like that. So I think everyone, it's a common emotion. You're scared, you're worried. Is this the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? But I think deep down, if you really listen, you know, it's like, for me, physically, I could not, I dreaded getting out of bed in the morning. Like it got to that point. So I think um, mentally we can, yeah, just going to the the previous company. Yeah. So just going to work was a physical effort to get out of bed. So I think mentally we can, we can drive a lot, you know, our minds, we can control our minds into doing what we want it to do right? You can tap into that energy, but physically, if you're not listening to your body, then, then you start to have issues. You're not sleeping, you're not eating, or maybe you're overeating. Um, Whatever those reactions are, your body is telling you something. And I knew for me, I was physically drained, couldn't get out of bed. I was having all these issues physically. So I think that to me was the telltale sign that this is the right thing. And that fear is something you can control in your mind. It's like, of course you're afraid, it's new. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what's gonna happen. So, but those are things that then I would look back and say, if I could hit and exceed my numbers every month, being probably two top two in the company every month, I must know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, you know, so we, yeah. So I'm hearing two things come, Two wonderful, I guess, adjectives, right? One I'm hearing fear, right? Fear was fear driving you, or was when, when uh, I'm always curious when I hear entrepreneurs say fear, right? Because, and then you said opportunity, so fear and opportunity. So how do those work together for you? I'm, cur- I'm yeah, curious. that's a good question. Um, so there's two kinds of fear, right? At least for me, um, one is that exciting fear for something new. And the other is that fear that paralyzes you. Like for example, March of last year, 
I think everybody watching that vicious news cycle and how, you know, just, it just seemed like hopeless, you know? So you get wrapped into that cycle of hopelessness and that kind of fear is paralyzing. And the only way out of that, in my experience, it, what I do that works for me is meditation. I, I can't, I just have to stop listening to the news. I have to go to that quiet place and really just start focusing on what's next. You know, you, you have to, at some point, tune it out and not look backwards and only look forward. Um, and I'm fortunate that I had a life coach. I hired a life coach uh, a year ago, was the best investment I ever made. Um, and then you just like network, like call all the people in your circle that you that you know are those positive, you know, hustlers, you know, so, like those are the people that I called. And, um, and that really helped get me out of that, you know, cycle. And, and, and therein lies another, another term. You said you meditate a lot. I do. Mm -hmm. And, and how, how's that been working out for you for keeping you grounded and driving your business forward? Yeah, I do it. I, uh, so I do it every day. I try to do it every day. And I notice that the days I don't do it are more chaotic. So there's something to be said, even if it's, and I'm not one of those people that just sits there and kind of zones out and tries to like clear the mind that that kind of thing doesn't work for me. I like to, I think it's a very personal thing. You have to find what works for you. So I found what works for me and the days that I do it are much more productive. I'm more relaxed. They're not chaotic. I totally notice a difference as the days that I'm just so busy. It's like, I have to get up. I have to start working. Um, so I really try not to go down that rabbit hole and to really get into at least 10 minutes um, to center and, and then start the day. So I highly recommend it, whatever it is for you, try a bunch of different things, um, but you'll find the one that works and then you'll see the difference on the days that you do it versus the days you don't do it. You know, I've been interviewing entrepreneurs now for, for, for a bit of time. And I can tell you the ones that have told me they meditate or pray yep. are the ones that have been without question, long-term successful. It's really interesting, right? Um, and I think it's because you have to stop for 10 minutes or whatever that amount of time is, is for you to listen to yourself. Like, I don't think we listen to ourselves. Um, one thing that I learned from my life coach um, is to feel the energy in your body. So wherever you're having issues, your body tells you a lot. So if you can stop and listen to it, you'll get the answer you're looking for, no matter what the question is. That's interesting. How do you do that? How do you, what was that? I mean, personally, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you sit back and listen to your body? Yeah. I'm just, I'm curious on your take. I have a, a similar approach, but I'd yeah. like to hear yours. So I basically will just kind of close my eyes and try to relax as best as I can lay down and you just feel the energy. You could start at your head and work your way down and you'll just know like certain things will be tighter than others and you'll your stomach will be like clenching like sometimes you don't even realize it's happening like i i actually have to wear a mouth guard at night because i just clench my jaw yeah so you're clenching for a reason like something you know you're tightening up your body tightens up so there's probably something going on that you're either avoiding or not dealing with or stressing you out. And then I'll try to think about what that is, like what is annoying me? And I'll make that my number one thing to get done that day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you wanna pick, I, I, I like this method, pick three things. Like, you know, I have a whole list of stuff I have to get done every day, right? Do we ever get it all done? No, you can't worry about it. It's like, just have your list, check it off as you go. but one thing I will do are the top three every day. So whatever my body is telling me, I'll usually know what it's connected to that's irritating me or annoying me. And it'll be in the top three for that day to get done. Um, and then you'd be surprised your whole body relaxes. It's like your stomach will like lighten up, you know, you're not clenching. Sometimes I'm not even breathing. Like if you catch yourself, you're not even breathing. You're like holding your breath and you don't even know it. 
progress, right? You're making progress. Yeah. Pro progress, progress takes away some of that anxiety. That's yep. true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So, so tell us a little bit about you left your firm. Yep. Right. You, you, you started your new firm, eighth at events, which is a pretty cool name. I like that. <laughs> right. Got a little aim back there. <laughs> oh, is that on the wall? Okay. Yeah, see. <laughs> got it. Got it. Um, so how, how were things from the time you left up into COVID? I mean, what was the progress like? Yeah, so, uh, you know, again, very fortunate, very blessed. Um, my company just kind of took off. Um, the five years that it, it's, it turned five this November. And, um, you know, I had an amazing run. I mean, year over year, increasing revenue. Um, as a solo entrepreneur, I was featured in Forbes for a $1 million one person business. And it's the it's like a new niche um, area that Forbes is focusing on because so many entrepreneurs are now able to achieve it as a solo person running a business. Whereas before it was something very difficult to do, uh, whether that's you know because of the internet or whatever the case may be. But in professional services, it's actually really difficult because it's, you're not really scaling. So you are, but you're not, and it, it's done in a different way. So, so that was something that made me realize like, wow, I actually am, <laughs> I am actually doing pretty well. I didn't really have a, anything to compare it to. So like, I really didn't know how well I was actually doing, um, you know, until like my accountant was like, Hey, you know, you're doing pretty well. And then, um, you know, and also like Forbes, you know, so they were like, most people in the professional service industry are not achieving this, just so you have a measure of where you're at. And I was like, huh, who knew, you know, I didn't know. Um, <clears throat> so in that sense, I was doing really well with live events, because that was the industry. Um, and then, you know, March came along, and uh, the whole industry basically tanked overnight. Venues were closed, restaurants were closed, no one was planning events in person. Um, and, you know, talk about being scared. Um, that was a very frightening scene. And what's even more disturbing now is so many of my friends in this industry are either unemployed, furloughed, their venues are not even open, the restaurants are gone. Um, I mean, it's, it's, really disturbing and saddening to see, you know, what's happening. Um, and then, you know, in my situation, I was very fortunate to make those calls and talk to people right away and figure out that virtual is the way to go. And I had a lot of talent that I was already working with. So I basically reached out to that talent and taught them how we were gonna do this. I'm like, you're gonna put a laptop in front of you and you're going to do the event just like you would if we were in person. And at first they were kind of like, what? Um, and that's what we did. And it worked. And <laughs> last year was my best year out of all five. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. It's pretty Incredible. wild um, considering what everyone else is, is still dealing with. So I'm, I'm curious, right? I'm sure people that are listening are curious. We go from live. It's a paradigm shift, right? Yeah, literally. And I, 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 had, I had the opportunity, you know, I, I sit on this board called Mars Arts and we had our first virtual event to share. And we sat in front of, so instead of being in the event um, where we're, we're sitting around a table with an influencer of some sorts, right? We did, right. It, we did it online. And I was shocked on how, how well it was, it was, it took off. I mean, instead of sitting around a table where there's noise in the background and you're not really getting a chance to, to dial in one-on-one -on -one with the person that was giving the conversation. This time around, we're, we're sitting in a Zoom room for the most part, and you're 100% dialed into what the person's talking about, mm -hmm. what everybody else is talking about. So it was, for me, it was a paradigm shift that was welcome. I, I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it was perfect because you missed out on the cocktail hour and you missed out on all the other fun stuff, but it was a for me, it was a it was a pretty pretty interesting event. So here, so here you are. You decide you're going to pivot. You have yep. my guess is right. My guess is Alika, you had to convince people to come mm -hmm. along with you. Your yep. talent pool, right? Did is that is that fair? 
Yep, it is. Um, you know, clients, uh, luckily for me, my clients um, believe in, in me and that was detrimental to the success of this. Um, so basically, clients were like, what are, you know, what are we doing? Like, do you have something we can offer our customers? Because, you know, businesses still had to get in front of their customers. So they had to figure out, you know, what are they going to do? Um, and, you know, they were already kind of doing like Microsoft meetings, like WebExes and stuff like that. So it's just a matter of, okay, well now how do we integrate the entertainment? Yeah. And then that's where I come in. And I'm like, look, this is how we're going to do it. You know, I advise them very early on, don't spend a fortune on the production stuff. Like, let's just do a few, see how it goes. We'll do it like bare bones. Like here's a laptop. We'll test the camera. We do rehearsals. We'll help you get set up with your background and all of that, you know, for the talent and for the host, which is the client. Um, so we would do rehearsals and run through the whole thing. And then the day of the event, you know, we do a final sound check and then proceed. And they really worked well. Hmm. Um, so that's how we did it very early on, like nothing crazy. It was all super simple. Let's just keep it simple for right now. But then by, I would say July, we really started to turn things up. We brought in production, we brought in camera crews on site. Um, definitely production wise, it's like watching a TV show now. So, so, so we, tell, tell us, right? So you, you made, and, and this is something that I, that I hear from entrepreneur after entrepreneur. You made incremental progress. Yeah. Is, it, is that fair or did you make, I mean, it sounds like let's try bare bones. Let's experiment. Let's see what works. Yep. That's, it doesn't work. And, and is, is that, is that the, is that the iterative process you went through? Yeah. And now we're at a place where like, you know, we have proven case studies, like the ROI is real. Um, it's working and we've come up with best practices already. I mean, we've done a lot in eight months. Um, so yeah, they're, you know, they're amazing. And now we're, there's still going to be some form of hybrid going forward. Um, not everybody, even after a vaccine, not everybody's still going to feel safe to do these in person. So we'll probably have some form of hybrid where we'll be in a venue, we'll have a production, but we'll probably live stream it. Um, I mean, one of the most successful ones I did, and we've really challenged the systems. Um, I did a live virtual concert with Keith Urban for like 10,000 people. Wow. And uh, we live streamed it from Australia and it was flawless. Um, so, you know, the technology is there. So it's just very interesting that it wasn't being used before and now it's all we can talk about. So it's pivoted in such a way that, you know, I kind of got excited about it. Like, to be honest, I love live events, but I was at the point where I think everybody has that five year marker where you start to revisit what you're doing and you're kind of like, not that I'm bored necessarily, but you're looking for something, yeah. something to get excited about again. And not that I would have ever wished this on anyone, um, but this got me excited. Um, this challenge became exciting because of the technology and figuring out what are the capabilities, like how crazy can we get with this stuff? And, uh, and basically I will say this to any client, whatever you were doing in person, we can do virtually. And when you say virtually, can we do it? Can we do it virtually better or better virtually or is it equivalent or, you know, talk to us about that. I would say better is a hard word. I would say it's different but the outcome of success is the same. So the delivery is different, um, but I do think the outcome of success is the same. Got it, got it. Yeah. And, and so it's, is, it, is it the technology or, and I always see entrepreneurs, uh, many entrepreneurs, uh, and I'll put myself in there. We tend to uh, undersell ourselves a bit. Mm -hmm. right? I would bet you that if I talk to clients, they're going to say, Alicia figured out how best way to use the technology, right? Because my guess is you came up with a new solution and technology is just an avenue. It's probably all you, 
right? Or you and the team that you employ. I bet you use technology in a way that's just wasn't thought about before. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the key, right? There's always resources that we're not using unless somehow we're forced to use them. And I think in the past, we didn't really have to because all of the stuff we were doing, we were doing it live. So it's not that we're doing anything different. Um, audio visual wise in a in a live event, you would have your AV team on site, whether the venue provided it or the event planner brought it in. Now it's the same thing. We're still using AV. Um, they're controlling it remotely now. Um, we do 90% of my stuff is done through Zoom. So Zoom is a great platform and it connects to any, you know, AV team that I've ever used. You know, they're they're logging in, they're using switchboards, they're controlling cameras remote. So the technology was always there. We just weren't using it. Yeah. You know. And, and so now you repurposed it. And what are your clients, what are your clients saying at the moment? Um, so right now we're still moving forward with all virtual till the end of Q2. So, you know, I, you know, I was hoping live events would start sooner, but it's not looking to be the case. I think everybody's saying end of summer. Yeah. And I think that's going to have a lot to do with what happens with the vaccine. So companies are really waiting for their employees to be able to get the vaccine before they'll agree to in-person events. Um, and then who knows what's going to happen from there because is everyone comfortable getting the vaccine? Whole other topic. Um, so there's going to be a lot of that. So so here we are, COVID, we're, what are we in January? I'm, 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 I'm losing yeah. my mind being in the house so much. But here we are, it's, it's January, 2021. You've been dealing with this for almost a year now, right? It'll be a year in March. Yep. How has your company, now I understand you're a one person, one person company with many, many, I would imagine vendors and partners, but how has COVID forced you to be a better company? Yeah, that's a good question too. Um, I think you like, I've always listened to my clients and executed based on what they're looking for. Um, but this year has been challenging in a sense of they're looking for me for guidance. They want to know questions. They want answers to questions that we just don't have enough. Like, we just don't know. We haven't been doing these. So th there's been questions asked like, okay, well, what, what are you saying are the best in this scenario? It's like, well, we just started. So there's no, <laughs> there's nothing to base it off of. So um you know, fast forward now, nine months later, when I get asked those questions, like what are the top five virtual events? Boom, now I can rattle them off. But we had no basis to go off of. So so I think in that sense, you know, they're looking for direction, they want answers. And the answer is, this has never happened before. So we just don't know. Yeah. Um, but that's why you got to minimize your risk, right? You take calculated risk. I'm like, you know, I'm not a huge risk taker. I wouldn't say that's in part of my nature, but I am a calculated risk taker. So I would say that's why we started bare bones with stuff because you're not gonna spend 40 grand on production when we have no idea if this is even gonna work. So, so that's why we kind of started the way we did. And now that we know it is working, yeah, let's level up. Let's bring in the production crew. Let's make it look like you're watching TV. Let's get some aesthetics, you know, whatever it takes now. So now that we have some proven methodology, um, I can give that advice. But before we just, <laughs> we just didn't have the answers. Yeah. And, and how has this, uh, you know, this, this new service, how has that positioned you against your competitors? Yeah, I think I'm fortunate in a sense, you know, I always say first to market wins. Um, and now that I have the experience that I have and was first to market with a few other companies that were doing this, um, we have the history now, you know, we know what works, we've been doing this as opposed, so that's a huge advantage as opposed to all the now virtual companies I'm seeing pop, popping up and good for them because you have to do something like, I, you know, doing something is always better than doing nothing. So a lot of businesses already out of business. I have friends in the event industry that their companies, they didn't do one event all year. 
that like breaks my heart. I don't know how, if they just got paralyzed by fear or whatever, but that's one of the reasons why I like to do the, the speaking engagements like yours that I'm doing, because I really want to be able to help people. Um, there's enough business out there. It's like, you know, if you could start a virtual, if you could take your live event company and switch to virtual, then that is what you should be doing. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to do it when I did. So, which puts me as one of the leaders now in, in this platform, because I have the knowledge and the history of everything we've been doing for the past eight months. You know, again, just one of the trends that I see from really successful entrepreneurs comes down to something you just said, which to me is absolutely beautiful, is you said, I'm looking to help people, which you normally think entrepreneurs, competitive market, I just want to win, right? Yeah. And the, the entrepreneurs that I see that have the confidence and, you know, get through these tough times are the ones that say, yeah, I haven't figured it out, but I'm, I'm happy to share the things I've learned with others so they can be successful. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm all about that energy, you know, it's like what you, what you give out is what comes back. So if you can help people, it's always a win-win. Um, people that I've worked with in the past, you know, <clears throat> it full circle, right? They come back and now they're maybe talent that I'm using. One of the interesting stories is I did a live event probably four years ago um, at celebrity chef Gary Danko's house. Um, so he was willing to open up his house to invite my clients in for this exclusive dinner. And he was teaching them in his home kitchen how to make one of the appetizers that were served that night. Um, and it just so happens that the sommelé he had there serving my clients, um, you know, we met, great guy, we stayed in touch. Fast forward five years later, he is my number one talent in this virtual world. We did about 75, maybe like 80, maybe more, under, a little under 100, uh, virtual wine, whiskey tastings last year, all yeah. done by him. Incredible. That yeah. And it was a random, like, I need a sommelé. What about Jeremiah, who I met five years ago? reached out. He, I go, do you think you can do? He's like, yeah, I think so. I'm like, all right, well, let's practice. And he's like, done. We got it. We, I mean, it was like one of the number one virtual experiences of last year. That's incredible. incredible. Yeah. So, you know, you so, just never so, know. You know, I, I don't want to monopolize your time. We've already been chatting for, for a bit, but you know, one thing that I ask, uh, again, most entrepreneurs we, we have on the show is if you can share something, with entrepreneurs who are perhaps struggling or dealing with COVID or dealing with just something else that is, you know, catastrophic or something that is a game changer for them. What would you share with them? I would just say, you know, you have to do something, right? Um, and I think a big step to figuring out what that is, is talking to your network. Or even if you don't have anyone in your network, like I'm a firm believer of don't reinvent the wheel. Find someone who's doing what you're doing and ask them how they did it. And most entrepreneurs are willing to share ideas. And if they're not, then move on and find one who is. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there like myself that believe in reciprocity and giving back and helping others. Um, and if there is something that you're trying to do, or maybe you don't know what to do, um, look for those people because right now, you know, Instagram, social media is your friend. You can find anyone on social media and reaching out to them, especially now, because most people are unfortunately not that busy. They will have the time to talk to you and, and possibly give you some guidance, you know, and, and I'm one of those people, it's all about how you're positioning it to them. Like if there is someone you want to talk to or someone you think that might be able to guide you, you know, ask, don't be afraid to ask. Um, I've reached out to celebrities, like having no contact or, you know, whatsoever, just through social media and have gotten responses. I'm like, this is a virtual experience. I know you have no idea what I'm talking about, but I will explain it. And, but, and I've gotten like 50% of my talent doing that. Um, 
So I think, that, you know, the simple, you know, the simple answer is don't be afraid to ask for help. And even if you don't know what that help is, if you know who it is, um, just keep reaching out until someone responds. And, and I think they will offer guidance. And I think that's what people need right now more than anything is guidance, like talking to someone who can help you just start to put things in motion. And then it's up to you, right? You can get all the guidance in the world, but if you're not going to act on it, then forget it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, you're, 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 you're absolutely right. There's so many entrepreneurs that just maybe out of fear, they're, they're paralyzed. And you know, yep. what, what I'm hearing from you is, yeah, that's, there's fear, but I had to do something. Yep. And again, another sign of an entrepreneur who is, who is successful, um, I heard today that you had an iterative process. You, 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 you learned, you listened, you iterated, or I should say you innovated and you continued to do this until you get to the place where you were, you were successful or you are successful and you're, you're, you're better, you're better because of it. Right. So challenge, yeah. uh, this challenge of the COVID made you, made you better. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Ironically. Yeah. Mm hmm. I think that's when we find out, you know, it's like I said, you're going to have those times where you have to really dig deep and it helps to have the knowledge of a previous time where you overcame something yeah. um, to prove to yourself, you know, if we don't believe in ourselves, then, you know, no one else is going to either. So it's, it's digging deep to find that and remember it when stuff like this happens. Yeah. So, so Alicia, if I were to take, take, take away what I heard today for the past 45 minutes or so, I, I, hear, I hear the following. You're a risk taker, but you're a risk taker that's guarded, right? You don't take unnecessary risk. You're a person that digs deep into her network and tries to understand what is needed, what opportunities are out there. I also hear that you're a person of action right? You take action um, with prudent, prudent skills around risk. I also hear you're a person who's very, um, you're, you're inward thinking in the sense that you even meditate or find that place in the morning and uh, think about the day, think about, you know, your, uh, your business, your, your own self, your own health, your own mental, uh, I guess, wherewithal. So is it fair to say that this is what makes Alicia a really good entrepreneur? These three, four attributes maybe? Yeah, I think that those are all, yeah, it's all encompassing for sure. And I think those are traits that definitely help me um, stay grounded and continue to move forward. You know, let's face it. Some days we all just want to pull the covers over our head and phone it in, you know? Um, but that's when, you know, you have to say to yourself, do I want to win or do I want to just get by, you know, and we're not here to just get by, we're here to win. So it's like, you want to, you want to excel at what you're doing, not just kind of like scale on by, you know, that's cool. So you have a, you have a passion to live at a higher, at a higher level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. This was, this was excellent. Um, it was, uh, shocking on, on how you've dealt with this, uh, shocking in a way that you've, uh, you've you've taken the bull by its horns and are more successful today than you were prior to COVID. Incredible, yeah. incredible Thank story. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all of this. This was, uh, this was wonderful. I'm sure entrepreneurs are going to learn from you. They're going to get inspiration from you. Uh, and we really appreciate the time. Thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate your time too. This was really, uh, it was nice. Nice chatting with you. Yeah, same, same.